Uh, and uh, looks like Harlan's the team captain. Is that what the C stands for? Uh, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. I'm going to ask him. Is he would be the person. What, I would be or he would be? He would be. Oh. He would be not the person to ask? other than me would be. Oh, yeah. Not me would be the best answer. <laughs> if you look at the number next to their names, you'll see their spot on the leaderboard. And I believe that's the overall leaderboard. Uh, Harlan Fear currently in 12th. That means he has two buys to all the individual opens. Uh, Dominic Harvey is 7th place currently. He's looking to get uh, somewhere in the 5 to 6 range to, to lock up his slot at the end of the year. Uh, it's going to basically depend on how many at-large bids we end up having because a lot of the people on the leaderboard right now for the overall leaderboard are already qualified. Harvey on a mulligan to six on the play, or is this Tower Expedition map? We could be looking at turn three Tron. Just a polluted delta for fear on turn one. It's definitely not turn three Tron because he would have slammed it pretty quick. See a force from Harvey, so he's going to have to wait until at least turn four to get that online. And that's great news for Harlan, so he has an extra turn to get things going. Yep, Harvey going to take his time here. Fear will start turn number two with the Mishra's Bobble. You see a pair of Thopter Foundries and an Urza in the hand. Yeah, he's got a Goblin Engineer as well as a Urza High Lord Arcanist. So, you know, he's got the tools to assemble the infinite combo. It's just going to come down to whether or not he has the time. Getting confirmation from Dur Rob that Harlan is the captain of the team. C is for captain, not Cookie, like I had been told previously, and was good enough for me. <laughs> okay. Fear fetching. All right, buddy. Well, now he actually has the option here. He can fetch red to play the Goblin Engineer, uh, but that'll leave him without black slash white mana to cast the uh, the Thopter Foundry from hand. So he doesn't quite have the combo assembled. He needs to find another colored source of mana, preferably a fetch land or uh, Arkham's Astrolabe. So Engineer finds top, or Sword of the Meek, Harvey Cracks Expedition Map, Urza's Power Plant, one mine shy of Tron. Uh, he's going to play this mine, or the power plant, and then he has a uh, mine to take, or he has a chance to find the other piece with something like Sylvan Scarring, Ancient Stirrings this turn. The deck also plays a lot of those uh, cycling color bobbles, so you get to use your Urza lands to produce green mana to play those ways to fetch. But Speaking of bobbles, Fear took the opportunity to look at the top card of Harvey's deck. Unclear how much that information matters. What matters right now? Sylvan Scrying for that third Tron piece from Harvey. Now, you might think, oh, Harlan's playing an artifact-based deck. Something like Ugin the Spear Dragon might not be all that great, but... Unfortunately for Harlan, Thopter Foundry is a colored artifact, and Ugin specifically cares about whether or not there is a color on the card itself. Does find the land here to be able to uh, cast the Sword of the Meek, or the Thopter Foundry, and that combined with Sword of the Meek does offer up the potential for uh, the chain. But if Dominic Harvey has a big turn on the following turn, it's going to be bad news for Harlan, but it looks like he does have access to the combo. Fear fetches the 14, Scalding Tarn finds Watery Grave. Grixis mana online, as you mentioned. Here is Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meat Guardian, the Graveyard. We're looking for Harvey to have an Ugin, like you were talking about, an Oblivion Stone, pretty good here. Yeah, Stone, I think, is the kicker, but that means Harvey needs to basically hold up mana for a while. But he also needs to blow everything up in response to the Urza. Otherwise, Harlan can just kind of combo out in response. So a lot of trickiness going on here from Harlan's side of things. We'll see how Harvey navigates it. Tron now online. Eight mana potentially available for Harvey. Might start by cracking that star just to get an extra look. It's a fairly common line here. That is what he will do. Floats a green mana. Still a colorless mana floating, right? I believe so. There it is. All right, so he's gonna. looks like he's about to spend the green mana on something, maybe. Okay, all right. <laughs> let's, well, tighten, let's, tight, let's tighten it up yeah, down can we there. Get, can we get an alternate judge, please? <laughs> <laughs> all right, green and colorless in the pool. 
Oblivion Stone will be cast off of that and the Forest, leaving up five for the activation. Yeah, so he has the option here to blow it at any point, but he's got to be really careful. Got to sequence this properly. Now, main phase blowing it up might not be the best thing, because then Harlan can just go uh, second to the Goblin Engineer, bring back uh, Mr. Bobble, and then cycle the Bobble to draw a card. But Harlan's going to go ahead and sacrifice Thopter Foundry here to get back Sword of the Meek and a Thopter. Interesting play. Yeah, go to 15 off of the life gain. And this is some pressure for Harvey to act now. He wants to activate the Oblivious Stone, which he does get that Engineer off the table. Right, because the Engineer can uh, sacrifice the Sword to get back the Foundry if he lets it untap, and then go from there. But Oblivion Stone down. Now Harlan has to rebuild a little bit, but it looks like he has the necessary tools and another Thopter Foundry to get the engine going. And next turn, he can perhaps play the Urza Lord High Artificer and go infinite. Yeah, setting up for that. And there is Mox Opal as well. So four mana online because he had a Chromatic Star. So he has Metalcraft here. Ancient Stirrings for Harvey. Looking for something to break up the combo again. Does have four Oblivion Stones in the main deck. Adam Francie playing a slightly different build of Tron in the top eight. Has mm -hmm. some in the sideboard, main deck Karn the Great Creator. Harvey on a pretty traditional build of Tron. Yeah, I saw his list and I thought, oh, this is pretty generic. But maybe, you know, going back to that might be the way to go. It is amusing seeing Harvey playing a deck that is so old and stock. Very much not his style. Yeah, he is uh, a brewer. Through and through. But this weekend he chose to go with a fairly stock strategy of Monogreen Tron and a fairly stock build at that, but uh, he's having a lot of success with it here. He's in a pretty good matchup in the quarterfinals. Looks to be in an okay spot. It's not dead yet, but that can change in a hurry with Harlan's uh, pretty explosive Grixis War deck. He's going to tap Urza's Mine, uses one of the colorless mana for a Chromatic Star. Now he taps Power Plant. Three colorless in the pool, uses one of it to make a green. So now three floating mana and drawing a card. Some fancy sequencing here. Uses two of that for Sylvan Scrying. I believe he's already played a land for the turn, so he can't go get something like Blast Zone to protect himself. Right, and the second. The land for the turn was the second Urza's Tower. Right, but with that six mana left over, seventh from the colors floating, could potentially cast something like Karn Liberated, uh, minus on something like the Thopter Foundry. But Harlan could then just sacrifice the Thopter Foundry to itself, get back a Thopter and the Sword of the Meek. But that would deal with that potential chain of events. Harvey finds Sanctum of Ugin. Taps those towers. So here's Karn Liberated. He can use this to break up the combo. See where he goes with the Karn. Minus three on the Thopter Foundry. Fear will sacrifice it in response, make a Thopter, bring back Sword of the Meek. Yeah, so it doesn't get exiled, and you can obviously sacrifice it to itself. But uh, it doesn't have Thopter Foundry or the Goblin Engineer, and so that Urza Lord of Artificer is not nearly that's good, but he has the other Thopter Foundry! Wow, all three of them. And yeah, now he can go wow. infinite, present the whole deck, and Dominic Harvey's picking him up. All it took was the third Thopter Foundry, and being able to combo on turn, what, turn five through an Oblivion Zone and a Karn Liberated? Yeah, fought through two answers to his Thopter Foundries and just set up Urza combo. That's crazy. Harlan Fear now up a game in a match that he thought was a pretty precarious spot for him in the top eight. Players looking at their sideboards now. Options for Dominic Harvey, our Tron player. Four Leyline of the Void, three Nature's Claim, three Veil of Summer, two Dismember, three, uh, two Thrag Tusk, and an Emrakul, the Promised End. Yeah, so here, if you're Dom, you need to figure out exactly how many cards you can take out because you kind of want Leyline of the Void to slow down the Thopter Sword combo. Uh, as well as the Goblin Engineer. You kind of want Nature's Claim to be able to bust up the Thopter Sword combo and uh, maybe take you off of Mox Opal or one of those important lock piece artifacts like uh, Pith and Needle. Uh, and you also want Emrakul the Promise End because when your opponent's deck does some nutso stuff, 
being able to take their turn and, and, and flipping that Nutso stuff back on them is pretty hilarious. Uh, so those are the, all the cards he wants in. Now, cards coming out. I don't think he really wants the Dismember. It does stop the Urza Lord High Artificer, but that's not a fight that you really want to fight. And everything else feels kind of like part of the deck except Warm Coil Engine. So I think four Warm Coil Engine, one Dismember come out. I'm looking at three Nature's Claim uh, and maybe like two Leyline of the Void and maybe leave the Emrakul of the Promise in on the side. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room. With decks like Tron, you don't really have a whole lot that you really want to cut. All right, for Harlan Fear, the Cyborg, four Leyline of the Void. That's going to be a common theme from this weekend. Two Fatal Push, two Thoughtseize, two Assassin's Trophy, two Weather the Storm, a Nature's Claim, a Tezzeret Agent of Bolus, and a Duress. So you need to be the combo deck here if you're the Grixis Urza deck. If the game goes too long, I think Dom's cards will just overwhelm you uh, for the most part. Their raw power level for each is, is just really, really strong and, and generally better than yours. You're more of a, a synergy-driven deck, so you're going to want to break up those as much as possible uh, from your opponent. I think uh, Thought Season and Duress can both come in as means of slowing down uh, the ramp aspect by taking away things like Sylvan Scrying, as well as uh, when they have an overload of the mana sources, you can sometimes strip them of uh, their Karn Liberated or their big payoff card. So I like the discard spells quite a bit. The two Assassin's Trophies can actually break up Tron, which I like, but also in a pinch can be used to bust up the Planeswalkers like Karn or Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And then uh, the Nature's Claim can come in to potentially snag something like Expedition Map on turn one, but later in the game it might knock off something like uh, Oblivion Stone or force Dom to blow it in a spot where he's not really ready to blow it yet. These players and everybody in attendance at the Open this weekend were able to pick up a set of five new personality tokens here from Star City Games. Through July and August, you can get the set of five by entering any Open or Classic in your order on StarCityGames.com for $20 or more and an Invitational Qualifiers. I gotta say that Cedric Phillips Zombie Army token is my fave. I just wish that all the Army tokens behind them would have also been Cedric's. That would have been really nice. Yeah, yeah. Still a great token, though. There's the Cedric Phillips of the Army, and here's the Andrew Ellenbogen Vampire with Lifelink. Yeah, he's uh, known for playing those white weenie decks featuring Legion's Landing. That's what he used to win the Mythic Championship that he won uh, last year, and uh, a very fitting one at that. The Ross Miriam Elemental. Yeah, Ross is uh, known to play some Izzet in his day, and... Uh, Chandra, uh, Acolyte of Flame makes some elemental tokens. Young Pyromancer and Season Pyromancer both make elemental tokens right up his wheelhouse. And he looks, uh, I don't know, the, bearded, the beard of the elemental does not really look all that uh, appealing to me. But. I like that. I okay. think that's a nice right. touch. Okay. The rock beard. <laughs> Sam Black with the Eyeball Lantern, the Lantern of Insight reference there, the clue token. Yeah, I like that one. We, was it last week we discovered it was a Lantern of Insight? We discovered that it was eyeballs on the original Art for Lantern Insight. Right. Yeah. Some yeah. freaky stuff there. <laughs> a token we're going to see less likely than the other is the Dylan Hand Elemental token. Don't see a lot of voice resurgences these days. No, and this one is specifically tailored for voice resurgence. But, you know, I could see a comeback. There's a huge elemental theme from Corset 2020. And I've seen some talk of Flamekin Harbinger and, and uh, you know, uh, was it, what's the land called? The Elemental Land? Uh, Vision, not Visions Up Beyond. It's what's the some some weird land name for element. It's like the Elemental Legendary Land. Whatever, doesn't matter. The only thing that's coming to mind is Vitugazi, but I don't know if that's what we're getting at. No, it's a five color taps for only for Elementals land. Oh, Primal Beyond. Yeah, Primal Beyond. That's the one. But I've seen some I've seen some talk about Primal Beyond and Elementals, so there's a chance we see Voice Resurgence make a comeback. You never know. See, when I hear Elementals, I get excited that maybe we'll see a Moldrifter come back. Well, that deck had four copies of Moldrifter and four copies of Incandescent Soulstoke, so... Hell yeah. Yeah, that's my jam. Both players here getting ready for game number two. Let's see if they have some good opening hands to work with. One thing you see in Modern specifically now that we have the London Mulligan is quite a few Mulligans back and forth just trying to get... Uh, some of these powerful sideboard options in hand. Doesn't look like anyone's rushing to keep here, though both players are on seven. Urza's Tower, Chromatic Sphere for Harvey. I think Harlan had a, a bit of a, a weaker opener, but 
probably had enough cyclers to, to be okay. But the problem is, I believe if Dominic goes turn three Karn, it might just shut the door on Harlan before he's ready uh, and set up, you know. Fear had a chromatic star off a of snow-covered island. Harvey is going to progress towards that turn three Tron. Sacrifices a sphere for an ancient stirrings. Finds Urza's mine. What do you know? Chromatic star cast off of the extra land there. And we'll go over to Fear, who has picked up a thought seize for turn. It's a pretty good draw. Pretty good draw. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> sometimes it's great. Sometimes it does nothing. He'll sacrifice chromatic star. Makes a black man. We'll get a look at Harvey's hand. Does he have the Tron naturally? He does not. And it's Sylvan Scrying, the avenue to find it. So this Thought Seize might be good. We see Scrying, Karn, Chromatic Sphere, Redundant Urza's Tower, and Forest. Yeah, so he has two options here. It's going to be trivial, I think, for the Monogreen Tron deck to actually find Tron, uh, not next turn, but the turn after, thanks to uh, the, the two Chromatics, one in play, one in hand, uh, or the Sylvan Scrying. So I think if Harlan really wants to, to survive long enough in this game, I think his best course of action is probably to take the payoff card with Karn, because I think it's less likely that Dom draws a payoff card now that he's probably got no warm cool engines in his deck. He's just got a handful of walking ballistas, uh, Karn Liberateds, Ugans, and Ulamogs. Fear ends up going for the Sylvan Scrying, falls to 18, plays another snow-covered island. Yeah, it's fine. It does buy him some time. But, you know, with this cycle here and the cycle from the Chromatic Sphere in hand, there's a good chance he's able to assemble Tron by next turn, and then he's going to be able to cast the uh, Karn Liberated anyway. So Harvey made a green mana off that star, cast another star, covers that into another green, draws another card. Do we have Tron? Still has a Chromatic Sphere to play if he so chooses. Gonna play that backup tower that we knew about. Cast the sphere. Less incentive to crack that now. Some conversation there, Harvey had plus one mana on what he was using if he's not sacrificing the sphere. So that's cleaned up, that tower's untapped. He will sacrifice the sphere, get that green mana back in the pool. And he'll pass. That's going to empty. So no agent stirrings found there. No, but Harlan here is just going to draw and pass. He kept a color light hand with just two snow-covered islands. He's got a handful of Thopter Foundries and Goblin Engineers. And he's looking at a, a monogreen Tron opponent who may not have found Tron yet. So he might have some time. <laughs> and Harvey, yeah, just playing that forest to start this turn. Might have his Sylvan scrying, yep. He found Sylvan Scrying. So Tron will be online next turn, and we already know about a Karn. Yeah, and it could be even worse than that. Could potentially find Ulmog the Ceaseless Hunger, since he does have two copies of uh, Urge's Tower already. Has an exhibition map, so he can go get Sanctum of Ugin. Kind of slow roll it here if he wants to. On the back tables, we have confirmation. One of your predictions came true. Bobby Colgrove defeated Kevin Hong. The GAC won and the GAC lost. Yeah, dude, that, that one, honestly, that was the hardest pick of the day for me because, <laughs> you know, you never know. Sometimes GAC, GAC loses, sometimes the GAC wins. It's not often you get to see it do both. This game looks like it might be a runaway with the Karn. Fear just had a Mistress Bobble last turn. So he gets to draw two cards this turn, but he only has one land, and he's going to pick them up. Everything is all tied up here. And you can see why he was tanking so hard on the Mulligan, because he had, you know, one or two snow-covered islands in the Chromatic Star, but just wasn't enough to actually cast meaningful spells. Dom, even though he got hit with the Thoughtseize and slowed down a bit, had Tron on turn five on the play with the card liberated and against a, kind of a weaker draw from Harlan, was able to take it down. Another update from the back tables. Chris Hafner defeats Adam Franci. The GAC takes down the other monogreen Tron player. So now we are at two of a possible three Hogaks in the top four. Great. Awesome. Exactly what I wanted. <laughs> well, luckily for you, we're done after this round. Oh, really? Oh, snap. I can't get enough of this, though. Really? I just like saying <laughs> the GAC. <laughs> 
We've had some really good memes today. I'll say that. <laughs> Our director, Rob, who's in my ear right now, posted a really sick meme. Uh, it was uh, Mission Accomplished. It was Hogak holding up a bridge from below with a Mission Accomplished sticker behind it. There it is. <laughs> we got him! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Hogak in the suit really does it for me. Oh, yeah. President Hogak. This one's the problem, you see. <laughs> when in reality. It's the warmonger. <laughs> Players revisiting sideboarding a little bit here. The Tron sideboarding is a little bit tough. I know you were talking about how Harvey likely looking at trimming all those worm coil engines, things of that nature. Some argument to trim some of the cogs as well. By the cogs, you mean like the chromatic stars and such? Right. Yeah. I think those just kind of keep the deck running smoothly. They do cause for uh, some flooding when you do side out a bunch of your your more top end stuff. Like if you side out all your warm cool engines and he's playing four, you know, uh, the meat is no longer there and you're just left with a bunch of potatoes. <laughs> and for those of you who eat a lot of pot roast, you know what it feels like to not have any meat left and just a bunch of potatoes. Man cannot still, survive still fine. on potatoes alone. It's still fine, right, because you're still eating potatoes, but you need that meat for sustenance. I think that uh, you, know, you asked that question, assuming null nutritional value, you'd be fine on nutrients. You can only eat one thing the rest of your life. I hate that question. If I could cheat and just say potatoes and I can eat any mode of potatoes, definitely lock that in. If I have to narrow it down, mashed potatoes or french fries easily could do nothing but that the rest of my life. Really? I love both of those. I mean, I like french fries too, but every meal for the rest of your life and it's the only thing you can eat, at, one, at, at some point, you can't eat it anymore. It just, it's impossible. Your body just can't, it'll re start rejecting it. It'll start tasting like ash. Hey, I don't, yeah, Dirt Rob correctly points out that he's still eating Taco Bell. I'm still eating Taco Bell. Do you eat Taco Bell every day for every meal? Could. I'm got telling a, you, got man. Got some heathens in here. Just give me a me. give me a sloppy bowl of mashed potatoes every <laughs> every meal the rest of my life. <laughs> oh man, know. okay. I can get by on that. Put me on death row. Last meal, just a smattering of mashed. I'm gonna dip French fries in mashed potatoes. You know that is an underrated thing to do. I don't know if you've ever actually done that. before. I have. It's it glorious. Is amazing. Potatoes two ways. <laughs> I'll show Gordon Ramsay my dish. He'll be like, oh, it's bloody brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Got potatoes two ways. Never would have thought of that. I like that your fantasy involves Gordon Ramsay accepting and being supportive of your idea. Oh, yeah. I watch way too many cooking shows with my wife. <laughs> All right, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Pretty important game number three here for the two teammates in the top eight. We're talking about a pretty serious allotment of SCG points on the season. Yeah, not only that, but these players are playing for thousands of dollars. A trophy here at SCG Columbus as well. Dom Harvey, number seven on your leaderboard. Harlan Fear, number 12. Both looking to potentially get one of those end-of-the-year at-large bids. But both looking to pick up some much-needed points this weekend. Whenever you make top eight, converting that into a win is always a boon when you're in the race for the Players' Championship. Quick mulligan for fear. Harvey is going to join him. The London mulligan, I think, uh, helps a lot of these modern decks out because... They get away with not really needing a bunch of raw resources. Uh, so you're pretty aggressively mulliganing hands that don't have interaction or hands that just get straight up beat by an opposing piece of interaction. And you get to throw away basically the worst card in your hand, the second copy of Thopter Foundry or Sword of the Meek or maybe the redundant Tron piece. 
The Grixis Urza deck, still a relatively new one to the scene. Got a lot of huge updates from Modern Horizons. Oh, yeah. We've known about Green Tron for a long time. It's a deck that's been aggressively mulliganing for years. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the relative ability of Urza to mulligan and still hang with five and six card hands? I mean, the deck still needs uh, raw resources to get the job done. You know, you need Arkham's Astrolabe and things like that to cycle. Uh, but, you know, you have a lot of ways to gain card advantage once you've mulliganed. Goblin Engineer allows you to do that with things like Icar Wellspring, Chromatic Star, uh, even Sword of the Meek. And so the, the actual number of cards matters less rather than the specific cards. But, you know, you still need to have enough artifacts early on to turn on the likes of Mox Opal, for example. All right, both players keeping on six. Harvey on the play starts with Leyline of the Void. <laughs> All right, time to go manual mode. Would not be surprised to see Harlan Fear getting real aggressive with some thopters. Scalding turn for Fear versus Urza's Tower Expedition map for Harvey. Now Harlan, almost guaranteed here to have Assassin's Trophy in his deck, but he's got to draw it. Snow-covered island is his second land. Out comes Astrolabe, will draw a card. Looks like he has multiple thopter foundries in hands now as we go to Harvey. Can we set up with a second Tron piece? I don't think so. That's a forest at the front of the hand. Yeah, I think he just has another tower and a forest, so can't quite assemble Tron here on turn number three for that Liberated, but might be able to assemble it on four if he's lucky. Chromatic Star cast off the tower. And now Harvey's thinking it before playing that second land. Yeah, he wants to wait basically as long as possible to pop the map because if he naturally draws, one of the other Tron pieces, he wants to be able to exhibition map for the third one. And if he picks incorrectly early on and draws a redundant one that he searched for, that's just real bad news. So there's the forest, sacrifice chromatic star, makes a green mana, ancient stirring is cast off of that. There's a power plant among the cards, that one's going to the hand. All right, so we got turn four Tron locked up. Let's see if Harlan can get something going before Dominic deploys that card and liberate it because that might be lights out for him. It's like Fear picked up a Duress as the draw for turn. Okay, okay. So he can cast Duress, follow that up with a Thopter Foundry. But he still needs to find a way to get that Leyline of Void off the battlefield. Well, Duress shows a hand to Karn and three lands. Well, Pretty easy take there. And uh, looks like at this point, Fear just shy the Sword of the Meek and setting up a combo. Yeah, but it doesn't really work through the ley line of the void, so ah. he really needs to find an Assassin Trophy, a Nature's Claim, or some other card that he might have sighted in. He has access to quite a few if he wants them. Two Assassin Trophy and one Nature's Claim being the primary ones. Yeah, so two points short, I guess. It's a four-card combo you need to kill a ley line. The Urza making the Construct token, though, if Harvey's going to have a hand like this. Might just be good enough. That applies pretty good pressure. Yeah, and if Harvey doesn't have uh, a big follow-up turn once he establishes Tron, and of course we know he sided, or we are pretty sure he sided out Warm Coal Engine, this could spell bad news for him. Pick up for Harvey was Chromatic Sphere. He'll cast that after playing Urza's Power Plant. Doesn't really want to pop it because he's going to be using his mana for Expedition Map here. Uh, and if he leaves a card in hand, it might ultimately end up with him... Uh, getting hit with another duress effect. Passes to Fear, picks up the fourth land, sacrifices Scolding Tarn to 16, Urza mana will be online. Yeah, and Urza's gonna create a reasonable sized Karn struck, that Matthias Hunt token. Fear considered finding a basic, ends up finding Steam Vents, goes to 14. That is the third blue source for something like War of Invention. Right. He casts Urza, makes the construct, currently a 3-3. And everything can tap for mana. And here is Thopter Foundry. Yeah, he just went ahead and played another one uh, just to get it online. Harvey here going to go ahead and cycle the Chromatic Sphere, but nothing really of consequence as far as mana is concerned. Basically just going to be cracking the map and assembling Tron. Let's see if he can find a big piece to follow it up. Map finds the Urza's Mine with the tower on it. The most maligned Tron piece. <laughs> and Harvey will draw for turn. Why would they do that? Ugin the Spirit Dragon. My oh wow. my. 
Unfortunately for Harlan, it actually exiles colored permanent, so if he minus twos, it will take care of not only Thopter Foundry, but it takes care of all the Thopters as well, since those Thopters that Thopter Foundry makes is blue. It's a huge pickoff for Dom. And we'll see where he wants to go with the Yuga, and he doesn't want to go all the way to minus four to take care of the Urza necessarily, because that would answer his own ley line of the void, so some tension there. Yeah, but Urza Lord High Artificer being left around is a bit dangerous, and the Karnstruck token is going to stick around too. So if he minus fours, he gets rid of the Urza, the two Thopter Foundries, and his ley line, but they all get exiled at the same time. So there's no threat of either going to the graveyard for, for uh, Dom to get back later. But I think a minus two might be the play, but that's going to result in his Ugin dying more than likely. Lands on minus two. Fear uses Urza to tap a foundry to sacrifice itself to make a Thopter. Goes to 15. Oh, excuse me, he needs two artifacts to get the, the Ugin off the battlefield right now. He just has five power, right, with that Thopter? Or no, the Thopter was blue. Sorry, the right. Thopter is exiled. So he has three power. But he can activate the Urza's, uh, what you call it, ability for five. And if he has an artifact here, that's going to give him the requisite amount of power with the Karnstruck token and the Urza Lord High Artificer to take care of the Ugin and give him a shot, a real shot to win this game. So it stopped her foundry into a spin. That's the first artifact. No. Scalding Tarn. That's not it. So he can't quite attack the Ugin down. Ugin to one. No, and now the Ugin can actually plus and kill the Matthias Hunt token because it's only a 3-3. Three, three, and the plus from Ugin does three damage. And Harvey has maintained that ley line, so... Fear not close to that combo with no cards in hand. Yeah, but if the Urza isn't dealt with, it does represent an extra card every turn. And he's going to be able to chip it down a bit with the Thopter Foundry itself, uh, along with the Astrolabe, um, potentially becoming 1-1s. One so Ugin answers the Construct. It ticks up to 3. See Sylvan Scrying for Blast Zone from Harvey. He has one mana floating because of a Tron land being used to cast that. Blast Zone will be the land for turn. I can go ahead and send it up to four if he wants to potentially blow up the Urza next turn. So Urza is probably the scariest card out of all these. But that would result in his Ley Line of the Void also getting blown up. Got to be careful. We'll see where he wants to go. Could get it all the way to four right away. Could just blow it up now if he really, really wanted to. To take care of the Astrolabe. That results in one less Thopter from the Thopter Foundry. It's not great. He lands on cranking it to four. Oh, man. He actually drew a Sword of the Meek. And if Dom wants to blow up the uh, Blasto next turn, that's going to unlock... Thopter Foundry from hand and allow him to generate some uh, bunch of Thopters. So it looks like Harlan will start the turn by activating the Urza. Going to spin the wheel. So we do have an update. Finally, a Hogak deck has been defeated. Logan Hoberty advances to the top four on Blue Red Phoenix. You know, at the beginning of the weekend, Ross messaged me on Friday night and said, what should I play? I told him, is a Phoenix over Hogak. We still have Is It Phoenix left. I might still be right. <laughs> Fear finds Mox Opal off that Urza. Urza attacks Ugin for one, Ugin to two. Yeah, I like this cast here. Now uh, Harlan has the ability to make up to four Thopters here if the Ugin doesn't minus. Go over to Harvey. Now untapping with that Blast Zone on four. Saw the hand a couple turns ago. It was a bunch of lands. We've seen him mostly cast the spell he's drawn every turn. Yeah, but he's also just drawn a bunch of lands as well. And I believe a Sylvan Scrying is his last spell in hand. And not a whole lot left to get with it. Just a Sanctum of Ugin, if I'm not mistaken. Unless he just wants another Urza's Tower. And mostly Tron lands. There is a Ghost Quarter in the deck, but it's pretty reasonable he would have sided that one out even. Yeah. 
Well, if you're Dom, you can clean up basically all the threats from the opposing side of the battlefield. You can pop the Blast Zone. That'll get rid of Leyline of the Void and Urza at the same time. And then you can minus Ugin, and that'll check the Thopter Foundry and all the Thopters it makes. And if he does those two things, he basically gets rid of all the threats on the opposing side of the battlefield. But maybe this Nature's Claim does the same thing. There is Nature's Claim pointing at the Thopter Foundry. Fear can use the Sword of the Meek to make a blue to turn that into a Thopter for whatever that's worth. Yeah, and he's thinking about whether or not he wants to sacrifice one more artifact to make another Thopter because uh, Harvey can just minus one if he wants on the Ugin or even minus zero to get rid of all the Thopters, I believe. Don't quote me on that. He's going to sack the top defender just to make one. Wants to keep his other artifacts around so that he can potentially activate the Urza Lord High Artificer's ability. Really wants to force Dom to blow up the blast zone to get the job done. So one Thopter showed up. Ugin's going to plus on that Thopter up to four. And Harvey's going to pass turn with mana to use the blast zone on four up. Yeah, Harlan here can threaten uh, two damage against the Ugin if he wants to equip the Sword of the Meek to it. It is an equipment after all, even though it very rarely gets used like one. <laughs> Not the most powerful at doing the honest equip and attack thing. Fear is going to start his turn with another Urza activation. Seems like if Harvey was expressly interested in using the Blast Zone, he would have already done it to prevent this Urza activation. Right, but he could be waiting just until end of turn. Uh, or waiting for Harlan to equip the Sword of the Meek, just get extra added value. Chromatic Star flipped off the Urza. Mox Opal makes some mana. Fear casts a backup Mox Opal. So there's blue in the pool. Well, Dom can blow it up here in response, if he so chooses. He's going to wait. Valuing that Ley Line of the Void pretty highly right now. So Mox Opal resolves, which means Fear gets another spin with the Urza. No response there. The Temporal Aperture homage going off here. I love that card so much. It is sweet. It was one of my favorite cards in Mental Magic. Because then you flip the top card and it's like, oh, this could be literally anything at that casting cost. <laughs> but, All right, what do we got? We have a snow-covered island. I haven't played a land yet for the turn. And you do get to play cards with Urza's ability. Urza attacks Ugin. Harvey lets that through. Ugin to three. And yeah, right now, the, uh, the Ley Line of the Void is checking... Potentially the Sword of the Meek slash a Thopter Foundry off the top. Checking the Chromatic Star so he can't draw a card off of it. And the Ugin's only getting hit for one, maybe two a turn if, if uh, Harlan wants to equip it with the Sword of the Meek. So Ugin starts to go to work upstairs. Fear to 13 off that activation. Ugin at 5 loyalty. I believe the draw step for Harvey was another Ley Line of the Void. Tough to cast. Need a couple of uh, Chromatic Sphere slash Stars for that one. Passes back Fear's way. See him using some artifacts to make some blue mana. So it's like five. Might be another Urza activation. It is. I think he's looking for Assassin's Trophy here. He could use Trophy to blow up the Ugin, and that's no longer a problem. Could also maybe take down the Ley Line of the Void with it, but I think the Ugin is a bit more pressing at this juncture. Nature's Claim would be a fine hit as well, knocking off the ley line. And he's, he keeps getting more and more looks at it thanks to Dom not blowing that blast zone. Mishra's Bobble found off the Urza. And luckily that one doesn't require going to the graveyard to get a card draw out of it. But it does require tapping, so you can't use it for mana and uh, use it for Urza. So here's our second Urza activation. So Harvey not using the Blast Zone seems largely contingent on hoping to draw something. At what point does he just have to fire it off? Well, he might not Whoa. have another chance because here's a Pithing Needle for Fear. 
That's a nice one. He's casting Pithanita. He's going to be able to name Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And that's going to take away Dom's Clock. And then it's basically Leyline of the Void and Blast Zone versus Urza. And a whole bunch of activations every turn. Dom has to make a really tough choice. Now you do still have to cast the card. So Harvey will have a window to respond. Yeah, of course. There are some weird ways to put permanence on the battlefield where you don't get that. Here, I think he might just want to blow up the Blast Zone in response to the Pith and Needle because Harlan could potentially just name uh, Blast Zone to keep his Urza alive. And he is firing off the Blast Zone. Yeah, none really that Harlan can do about it here, but now Pith and Needle pretty safely just going to name Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And then we get to reset. Everything's exiled. Harlan gets to use Mistress Bobble and has a chromatic star. But he doesn't have very many copies of Thopter Foundry left. Needle names Ugin. Don't quote me on that. You might actually have to tap the chromatic star to use it. I don't think you can tap for blue mana and then pop it. We're going to get the judge check on that. A lot of really weird stuff going on with some of these new cards, though. Ooh. And I, I think I spot an Emrakul the Promise stand in Harvey's hand and uh, get a load of Fear's life total. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. That's, uh, that's convenient. Now, I think we're looking at that Chromatic Star issue you were discussing. Okay, so it does tap. You mentioned it looks like it was, it was tapped for blue mana previously in the turn. Right, so he wasn't able to sacrifice it immediately. But, but Harvey says, hey, I got this Emrakul. Can you even win regardless of the outcome of this call? Fear says no. Dominic Harvey is going to advance to the top four wow. of the modern.